What a treat, Doc. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you, Doc. Doc, you know how much I appreciate this. I know you're so busy, too. You're a busy, busy woman. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I I don't know if it's good or bad, but it keeps keeps my day go by so fast. So, are you are you working today? I am. Oh I my am god! A, I have a patient right after this. <laughs> are you really? <laughs> What's the appointment? Um, I mean, let's see, three thirty. Okay. All right. We got plenty of time. Hopefully this will yeah. go by. But what a treat. My guest, one of my good friends too for a very long time. It feels like a very long time. Um, yeah. Dr. Dr. Michaela over here, doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. Is that right? <laughs> Did yep. <I> just... That's right. <laughs> oh, I nailed it. But yeah. How are you doing, doc? I'm doing good. This has been a challenge, definitely. And I think it's been a challenge for all of us. I went on a group call with a bunch of people in an insurance group that I'm in, and they hired a psychologist to talk to all of us. And she said, basically, we're all going through a grieving because life is changing as we knew it. And to just give ourselves compassion and love in this time of grieving. And one of, one of the things she said that was really helpful was that the breath helps to integrate our nervous system the best. So when we're really stressed, nice, long, deep breaths. Oh, really. yeah. And they said something like, you know, if every hour you do something to help your nervous system, like a deep breath or laughing or dancing or stretching or moving or humming or singing, or yeah. howling, some people are howling at the moon these days. It helps integrate the nervous system. So she said, those of us who, who do a little bit of that every hour will come out better. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I think I've talked about that a little bit with Carmen when I did the podcast with her, um, the importance of breathing. Not a lot of people realize that. And I did not realize that until she introduced me to Reiki or meditation. When I'm stressed, I'm, I'm literally not breathing or I'm holding it over in my chest so I could feel it I could feel the pressure or tightness in my back it's crazy how it works it's crazy that little thing can I know do it's so simple yeah people used to tell me just breathe when I was in my 20s I'm like oh yeah right oh, <laughs> like that's cool. gonna work <laughs> but it does exactly. <laughs> It does. Yeah. People out there trust us when we say, like, focus on your breathing and see how calm and relaxed. Do it for like five good, good five, 10 minutes. It can make a difference. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. So let's get right into it because that was Jamie's random question last week. How are you keeping yourself sane during this pandemic? So you, if you want to share, Doc, um, but um, what are you doing to keep yourself sane and how are you do, dealing with these pandemic times? For me, I, I just keep doing a routine. Like I keep waking up, getting a shower, putting makeup on, things that make me feel good, you know, getting dressed, taking my walk. And in the beginning, I couldn't find vegetables. <laughs> so that was a shock because I was thinking positively, <laughs> like I'll always be able to find vegetables. <laughs> but there, was, there were no fresh uh, foods, no fresh fruits or vegetables in the grocery stores around here. How come? So, is there a shortage or that was a shock. Oh. I think people were hoarding. I, I, would, I don't have TV. I don't really stay hooked into the news because I find it stressful. Oh, well, that's another thing I do. I, I don't hook into that. Mm -hmm. So I've been focusing on um, positive thought and self-development and how can I help people and how can I shift to deal with this? Because people always prosper in times of adversity. And in our history, people have always had to shift what they do it's like okay so now i need to shift how can i shift so i've been doing more business through zoom 
and through um, just connecting with people over the phone or text or just helping people distance wise. And then as the pandemic loosened a little bit, I got more work, so. I was gonna ask you, um, during these times, did you get more clients for acupuncture? I still need to make my own appointment. Oh my God, I can't (laughs) wait. (laughs) I have gotten some new clients who are focused on prevention and people with pain and migraines, and they found that their pain and migraines went away. They're, they're feeling better. The people who come, they get acupuncture, they feel better. Oh it helps your, your spirit, <laughs> your body, your mind. It's, it's very holistic because we, we can't just separate things. Like Western medicine went through a period where they separated the medicine and everyone became a specialist but you really can't separate everything. It all goes together. So when I do an acupuncture point for the body, it also affects the spirit and it also affects the mind. Oh my God. That's amazing though. I can't wait to come down. (laughs) I I can't wait to uh, San Diego and just really just make an appointment with you. I will let you know for sure. But um, something about earlier, Doc, like, thinking positively and this is it goes out to everybody sometimes it's not that easy let's just be real yeah taking care of yourself first oh god definitely not an easy job but you have to you know we're not we're not telling you guys you have to be perfect and able to uh, help others like little things like that like doc said breathing you know, take a walk you, you, little things like that that we took advantage or we took for granted it's, now is the perfect time actually you know we're dancing speaking of dancing doc is one of my favorite <laughs> in our dancing but i know you've been busy too we miss you at the studio uh, um, online studio <laughs> you're so fun. Dancers. <laughs> I know I've been missing that. I've been dealing with the fan infestation. <laughs> That's right. Oh my God. Do you want to share about that? You don't have to, but how's that going? I have indoor cats and somehow we got infested with fleas. So I got like a hundred bites on each shin. And then I, I called a friend of mine in England ca- crying. I knew he'd be up. He's like, oh my God. And I said, I, I don't know how to deal with these fleas. And he sent the perfect professional to me. He found them from the UK here in San Diego. And a coworker of mine uses them. And she said they're phenomenal. So for five weeks, I've been dealing with my cats jumping from furniture to furniture, afraid to touch the floor because there's fleas. I had no idea what to look out for because I'm a first time cat mama. But you if, if, you see, <laughs> if you see dandruff in the buttonholes of your cushions, that's not dandruff from the cats. That's flea eggs. I threw every single cushion away because I knew I wasn't going to launder those over and over and over again. They were seven years old anyways, so... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. I told you, though. You don't have to tell me. I've been through that hell, too. At least oh, my story real quick was I was renting a studio. Oh, God. I, I had to take off. At least I have an option to do that. But you, you live in your house with the two fur babies. I, I can't imagine yeah. that. So sorry. <laughs> I'm hoping there's improvements. Oh, there are. I went, um, I went two days without combing any fleas off the cats. And the last two days, I've been um combing off a couple of half dying or dead fleas and before i was vacuuming up over 20 fleas in my canister and now i can't even see one live flea in the canister but i am back two and a half hours a day (laughs) so you have to you just you just can't be so sure with those damn oh god i can't i can't you have to be on it you can't you just have to be until they're gone. <laughs> it's horrible. But speaking of babies, um, uh, do you want to give a shout out to your <laughs> to your two beautiful cats? 
Yeah, my two beautiful cats are sleeping right now. Skylar and Tax. <laughs> <laughs> How freaking good. Skylar, um, a little adventurer and Tax, because he's a little peacemaker. He reached out to me when I went to the shelter, his little paw. He was beckoning me with his little paw to adopt them. Oh my God. He was oh. the only one. Some cats were really spazzy. Some didn't care less. And, and he put his little pot outside the cage. And he was doing this. <laughs> and then I asked if I could hold them. And I held them one at a time. And they both purred. And they both cuddled in. And I said, mm. these are my cats. And I only went to go get one cat. But they're brothers. And I couldn't split them up. I just yeah. felt both of them so I'm so glad that I adopted brothers because we'll play for an hour at a time night and day and then they play for so long it's nice that they have someone to play with yeah that's cute oh my god oh, good too bad uh, they're sleeping we can't we can't bother them right now let them get their uh sleep yeah. <laughs> what was I gonna tell you doc do you um do you want to share how did you get into uh, the acupuncture and what made you be passionate about it because you're literally so passionate about it so I, I'm one of the things that I admire about you so much uh, thank you I just am in love with ancient wisdom as a child I revered the Native Americans and I studied and I wanted to learn what they learned and I remember I would go through the woods trying to be really quiet like the Native Americans and just trying to I was just enthralled with their medicine and then when I heard that Chinese medicine was over 5,000 years old I'm like whoa I would love to learn that wisdom and then I heard it was possible because people could interpret Chinese into English and that they were actually teaching it in America and I thought, I want to do that. And how I came across it was I was working my way through occupational therapy school. I was getting a second bachelor's while I was working full time as a social worker. So I had crazy hours. And I kept saying, my body is a machine. I can do anything. <laughs> but guess what? It wasn't. It broke down. And I got mono really bad. And I was sick. And I had lung congestion. And I had a bunch of things going on. And so I went to the doctor with this whole list of concerns. And I was only in my early 30s. I wasn't that old to be having these concerns. And he looked at me and he said, every visit, you get one topic. For every copay, you get one topic. So make another appointment, pay another copay, and I'll talk to you about another complaint. And I was so sick. And my income was so limited, I was like, Eight. really can't afford to pay another copay. And I was so ticked off that I was talking to a counselor and she said, you should look into Chinese medicine. And so I, I went to the library. Um, again, I didn't have TV, I didn't have a cell phone, I didn't have the internet. So I went to the library and I borrowed a cassette tape about Chinese medicine. <laughs> And I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the people on the tape. It seemed so calm and so genuine, and they really cared about their clients. And they would spend a whole hour with their clients, and they would take time to get to know a person and look through all of the different concerns and how they all related and how mm -hmm. they could treat them all. And I thought, I want to be a part of that. <laughs> And at the time, there weren't any acupuncturists in Midland, Michigan, where I was. They were in Grand Rapids. So eventually, I got to see an acupuncturist. But I went to my counselor, and I said, I'm going to do Chinese medicine. And she's like, you're in OT school. I'm like, yep. I'm gonna, I love OT, too. I'm going to use that career to help me finance my way through getting a master's and a doctorate in Chinese medicine. And she said you should do Western medicine, you'll get more money. And it's respected, people aren't gonna understand you. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know 5,000 year old wisdom because although I value Western medicine, right now it's not working for me. 
<laughs> and I want to mm. be a part of the group that is able to spend time with people, mm. you know, is able to get to know each person, is able to treat a lot of different things. And I'm so happy. It's just so fulfilling to help stop suffering and help people to help put needles where it gives messages to the body and the body tells the body what to do and your body heals itself. And so your body builds itself up from these acupuncture points and people's health improves. Like people who have seen me since I opened my doors, they're so much healthier than they were when they first mm -hmm. came to see me. They're not getting sick all the time. They don't have pain. They have more flexibility. And these people are in their late 50s. Wow. Um, real quick, the, uh, can I just ask you, that's amazing. That's why I respect you so much. Oh my God, you're pa your, your passionate about it with your clients. You're so, you're so good at it. But um, what was I going to ask you? Oh, do you have any advice or have you had any clients um, that's afraid of needles? Oh, everyone is. <laughs> I was too. <laughs> I hate needles. I hate pain. No, you're not. I don't believe you, though. I have a high pain threshold, but I remember the first time I saw an acupuncturist, I was looking at my wrist and I'm like, I can't believe there's needles in my skin. <laughs> I can't believe it. But you know what? We use the smallest needles. And I use, I do Japanese style acupuncture. We use the smallest needles made. And they're surgical steel. They're one time use. And I barely put it in because the research shows all you have to do is stimulate an acupuncture point for it to work. So one of my friends in Michigan had sinus problems when I was there. She let me stay at her home. She fed me. She was so gracious. And I said, may I please help you with your sinus condition? And she's like, no, I hate needles. I said, what if I promise to never put one in? Mm -hmm. said, okay, you can do that. So I just touched the needle to the acupuncture points, to the different sinus points to help clear the sinuses. And her sinus is cleared. And she's wow. like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, it is. There's so many things we think we have to suffer with. We don't. Right. <laughs> we don't because Chinese medicine addresses it. Oh my God, that's so amazing, though. And uh, you mentioned earlier, I did not know that you started as a social worker too. I never knew that. Yeah. No wonder you're so passionate, or you, you, you have you are very uh, compassionate with your with your friends or with others. Um, mm -hmm. did, is it safe to ask, doc? Um, when do you need acupuncture? Are there a specific diagno diagnosis that for people who need acupuncture? It's, or is it just literally for everything? It's actually a cradle to grave medicine. It's a good prevention medicine. Oh, um, okay. We look at the tongue, we feel the pulse, we feel the abdomen, we look at people's complaints. We're all born into this world for, with a weakness for some reason. There's just always one system that's weaker than all the others in everyone. For me, it was lungs. As a child, I would always get um, ear infections and bronchitis, pneumonia, had asthma. Um, so for me, when I started Chinese medicine, they focused on points to nurture my lungs. And when you nurture the weakest, and then you balance out the other organs, a person feels better. Like, I didn't know I couldn't breathe that well, so they did my lung points, and I could breathe easier, deeper. Like, wow, without trying. It's like, uh, I feel better, and I didn't even know I felt bad. So we can also sense when things are coming on. Like, I also work with geriatric, and a lot of them will say, I was healthy until my 80s, and then all of a sudden, all this stuff happened. And it does feel like it happens that way. Like, all of this stuff happened in my 30s, but it was building up gradually. I just didn't know it. Oh, but we can, that's we can see it coming. We can see it, it might... coming by feeling the pulse, looking at the tongue, feeling the abdomen. If you treat it, you can stop it, <laughs> or it can, you know, it'll be less severe, or it'll turn around faster. But it, it, you really can prevent things. 
And if you have something, you can turn it around quickly. And if it's chronic, you can still help it. I had something that was chronic for over 20 years. And oh within, my God. within a few months, it was corrected. That you was worth it to me. <laughs> oh my God, you released the Kraken. <laughs> you released the Kraken, you released their pain. That's amazing, dog. Oh my God. I'm so amazed. I'm so amazed right now. I, I just can't wait. I can't wait. Oh my God. But it's good for a lot of things. I've turned, I've seen diabetic feet turn from purple to pink. I've seen people who couldn't feel their feet for years feel them within five sessions. I had people who had like a chronic headache after she hit her head on a water slide for three years, eight out of 10 pain. Western medicine, she paid $30,000 in copays and they gave her a Botox headache. They gave her Botox and it created a different headache. So she then had two headaches. And within six sessions, she got rid of both headaches with me and she's still headache free. And she started crying. She's like, I paid $30,000. I was in so much pain. I should have seen you first. It was like less than 600 bucks and I'm pain free. She's like, we use you guys as a last resort. We should use you as a first resort. And that's how I use Chinese medicine. It's my medicine first. Because guess what? I don't have to suffer. <laughs> I don't have to wait 10 days before I go get an antibiotic. I can... I can kick that cold out and shorten it and never need one. That is incredible, Doc. I am so mind blown right now. I just can't wait to see you in San Diego. <laughs> I just finally get my damn acupuncture session with you. <laughs> uh, let's just. You. Oh God, Doc. Um, let's just go back. You mentioned you grew up in Michigan, correct? I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I had to ask Jamie because I literally fail uh, U.S. geography. Uh, how is it? How is it growing up in Michigan? In Michigan, I prayed to God, "Why am I here?" <laughs> it's a beautiful state, and people love it, and they don't want to leave it. But some people are meant for cold. And some people are not meant for cold. <laughs> I said, God, why was I not born in California or Hawaii? <laughs> oh, my God. I just died. You know, Jamie said the same thing about Oregon. People <laughs> from Oregon and Oregon, we still love you. But, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful state. I knew, my I knew all my neighbors. My neighbors who were 10 miles away, I knew everyone. We knew every family. So it was lovely that I grew up where people knew each other and they cared about each other. But it was so cold. It's so cold. If, if the weather is like California, do you think you would have stayed? If the weather were like California and if um, they have a really great cost of living, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I bought a cute Tudor style home, you know, with half an acre of land for 80,000 bucks. Come on. Did you really? Yeah, it was, it's, yeah, it's the only house I ever owned and it was beautiful and I loved it. I just, the frozen roads in the winter, the black ice where you don't know there's ice and you can't mm. control black ice. Oh. Like my there I saw a stop sign from half a mile away so I I took my foot off the accelerator and I coasted all the way to that stop sign and then when I came to the stop sign I knew it was slippery so I just did gentle pumping on the brakes and my car kept going and I mowed down that stop sign <laughs> so oh, I thought thank man. god country there's no one around it's just scary it's scary to drive and when we had freezing rain, we didn't have electricity for like a week. So no heat when it's, you know, negative 30 below. Kind of rough. Negative 30? I'm freezing my ass. <laughs> <It's wind chill. laughs> oh my God. That is, wow. 
Oh wow! Yeah, because I've I've never been to Michigan, and you know we both know Jamie's from Wyoming. I, I really, I would still want to explore those places. All of the fifty-two, fifty-three states of of US of A, I still want to experience. You know, people-wise, food-wise, culture-wise. It's But beautiful. Right now, It's beautiful. Just of should, Michigan, yeah. You should go in June or July. I like to go in October because I see the color change. That's what I like. It's pretty fun to experience the snow, isn't it? Like they yeah. get a lot of snow. <laughs> it was fun as a kid. It was fun. But yeah, when I went to New York. Even in Canada, it was winter. I love, I don't know, for some reason, I love traveling during the winter time. And the plane tickets are cheaper too, of course. But yeah, yeah. the snow, first time I've touched it, it felt like, I don't know, like a snowflakes big time. Like ice, shaved ice, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so um, culture-wise, Doc, I, you don't, Like I said, you don't you don't have to disclose it, but um, have you have did you did you have a good childhood back in Michigan? <laughs> no, I did okay. not. I don't think we all did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love my teachers. I love my neighbors. Thank God for them. So I think because it, it's a more connected, family oriented culture be, I think that's why I survived was because of my caring teachers and my caring neighbors like sometimes I'd miss the bus because they took a long time to take tests and um, I'd be walking home and home was 10 miles away but it never failed there would always be someone who knew me who would ask me if I'd like a ride home <laughs> doc you said you have to walk 10 miles If I missed the bus, but I never had to because a neighbor, we knew people from about 10 miles away. Someone always oh. recognized me along the way and said, hey, can I give you a ride home? And that's oh, sweet. That's nice. That's so nice. sweet. Yeah, but um, I felt more like myself when I moved to California. I just wanted to be um, in an area with a more open mindset. Um a place where I could walk out in the sunshine year oh, round. Yeah. That's <laughs> where our tax money go. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I know. But there's fruits and vegetables year round. Mm -hmm. California. I love, I love it here. Just expensive. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, it, I can't even. Um, I can't even imagine. Yeah, me, Jamie and I talked about it, how we all moved to California. But um, uh, I was going to ask you something to get the cut, please. Um, oh, so when did you move to California? When I was in 2003. Yeah, just a few years because I, I moved here from Philippines 2001. Oh, nice. First, of course, I've never been anywhere. San Diego and then here, LA. That's the best decision. Yeah, the best. right. Yeah, like, we're blessed to to live here in California. It's hands down. But um, we've talked about this. But I I still think you belong. Not that I don't want you to. That not that I want you to leave. But I I still think you belong in Hawaii. I think I do too. I think I do too. I just love how they revere nature and they speak my language. Yeah, they speak about living with the cycles and being more connected to the earth and it's just more laid back and I've always really not cared about time. <laughs> I've yeah. always been more laid back, softer. Yeah. And I feel so happy whenever I'm there. Yeah. Yeah, your 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 smiles in the pictures. You, you, sometimes pictures don't do justice, but every time you know, we both know that you you look happier on those pictures. Every time you go to Hawaii, if you like Hawaii, I'm pretty sure you like you like Philippines too. Eventually, someday, I'll take you guys back there. That'd be awesome. I hear it's gorgeous. Oh God, yeah, it's, it's yeah. one of 
Not, not because I'm being biased, but um, <laughs> some of the places, of course, I won't, I won't take you guys because it's not safe. <laughs> but there's still a lot of places in the Philippines that's super duper underrated. Nice. I would love to. I saw your family vacation there. And it looks yeah. so lovely. Like, oh, what a beautiful place. It did look a lot like Hawaii. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I think the weather is pretty similar. It's just humid in the Philippines. I'm pretty sure you can. You can handle that, Doc. But if you're by the water, you'll be fine. It's not yeah, that bad. I heard there's great snorkeling because, you know, there's less pollution. Mm, yeah. Yeah, especially in the remote areas where, yeah, you just have to take... You're not scared of riding boats, are you, Doc? No. Okay, good. Yeah, because some, some of the islands, it's literally Philippines, like literally just thousand islands. But you uh, have to boat to go to a remote area where they really conserve it. It's, it's freaking amazing. I can't wait. I was supposed to go this year, this oh. year but yeah, spend Christmas again with the fam since my... Um, my oldest brother had another baby, so I had to move it for next year. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. It's just crazy, dog. I can't. Uh, my number one, my uh, million dollar question is, you know, how, what's gonna be the new normal? You know, how, how we don't even have our pride this year. How is how are they gonna recover the pride next for next year? I can't even, starting with the restaurants alone, I, oh God, it's heartbreaking, especially here in LA, it's so rare to see restaurants being closed, you know? Mm -hmm. It's definitely surreal. Yeah, it's hard. I keep envisioning the virus getting destroyed and us being able to resume life and just hoping that everyone's on the up and up and has everyone's best interest but yeah i know I, we, we don't know right and all of the information is varied we're not getting consistent information so yeah exactly though it's just harder for especially our us in the medical field um all i see is numbers you know we get numbers every day of how much positive cases and how much deaths every day in LA County alone. And that's hard. Sometimes I just ignore those um, emails because it can really that's take a good. toll. Yeah, oh God, no, I can't. Um, I just do whatever I can. Um, trying to live my life normal again, mm -hmm. but it's, it's yeah, like you said, it's surreal. I can't, I, I still can't believe that we're dealing with this pandemic right now. And that I can't either. Yeah. I was just thinking that yesterday, like, I just can't believe I'm going on a walk and everyone's masked, you know, it's, yeah. I think the best thing we can do is take care of ourselves. Um, we know that if you take uh, liposomal vitamin C, you know, drink really pure water, eat whole foods, get sleep, breathe deeply, think positive, um, zinc, and also D3. Those are great for immune system. Oh my God, dog! I uh, there was uh, there's a, another podcaster that I've been listening. They they won't stop talking. I, it's not even a medical podcast, but they won't stop talking about the benefits of vitamin D, especially especially for people like me in the office every day inside. I don't get like sunlight. Yeah, they said it can really affect your body when you're older, and I didn't realize. I'm like, fuck! I need sorry. I need I need to go out more, because I'll yeah. go to the yeah, there's no sun. I'll come out of the office. You know me already. I basically live in my office. I'll come out and there's no sun anymore. I'm like, oh, God. I'll do that, too. It'll be time for my walk and there's no sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, dude, I waited too long again. <laughs> I can see your office. It's a beautiful office, though. At least you get, like, natural lighting in your office. Oh, thank you. This is my condo. Oh, it's, yeah. oh you're in your condo. Oh, my God. That's your <laughs> And then I'm going to go to my office. That has natural light, too. Yeah. Now I love light. At least I can see it. <laughs> Take a walk. And I cannot stress this enough. We acknowledge how hard it is, guys. I know it's not that easy. It's easier said than done. But um, just get up sometimes. Turn on the TV. Close your eyes. Focus on your breathing. Start from there. Start from something. You know, play the music. 
you know you can even ask yeah. me your dog we can we can do a, i'll do a private zoom with you guys in a heartbeat like yeah <laughs> Um, uh, Julie actually suggested it. Like, can we do like a private room with the gang, just dance or whatever, let loose? I'm like, I'm more than happy to do that. I'm down. That's wonderful. I don't know, dog. Something inside me always questioning why is this happening to us, you know? But I gotta look at the like you said, think positive. Is this is like the perfect time? And Jamie said to take care of ourselves. Um, slow down and take a break we really need to take care of ourselves first yeah i don't know that we can really know what's going on yeah it's just bizarre friends house yeah yeah and um yeah for people who's very um which i'm called very private or who's not really comfortable of sharing how they feel we acknowledge you guys too it's that's that's really hard but talking to someone you trust even if you well, you have one person who will listen to you that helps a lot too it really don't, does don't bottle it in because i had to learn that in a hard way i used to bottle up all my feelings and i'll just explode i bottled yeah. too until i felt frozen and i I learn, yeah, to to share, to share, and it's like a dam breaking, but eventually it normalized. <laughs> yeah, we oh, yeah. pay for we repress our feelings. So they say during this time, this is a traumatic time. So if we can talk to people about our feelings, even just one other person, we're less apt to have more severe psychological repercussions from this. And I've been seeing it with the elderly. Like I work in assisted living and I've seen people get really depressed and I'll take them out into the sunshine. You know, the rule was for them to stay in their room. And I said, you know what? I'm not being demanded to my room by the government. Neither are you. Let's go out into the sunshine. And it made them happier. Like they got a little skip in their step and it's like, whoa. And they let out a sigh that they were in the sunshine and they were among nature. We know nature gives us energy. It gives us chi. You know, so we need nature to nurture us. And oh, yeah. we're less apt to get the virus outside. We're more apt to get it inside. So yeah. it's actually healthier yeah. to be outside. <laughs> so Yeah. There is just something about it. I can't even explain it though. There's something about just being around nature. And I know how hard it is to take that extra step to get to uh, get up from your bed and just go out. I know how hard that is. Trust me. But once you're out there, oh God, there's something about being around nature. The quietness, blissfulness. Oh God. It's so healing. Yeah, there's nothing like it. It's just nothing could create nature. We can't recreate it. It's it's just a gift. It's a gift. Exactly. Exactly, mm -hmm. Doc. Um, what you call? Okay. I know you have a upcoming appointment, Doc, but I really appreciate you, Doc. You know that. I You're one of you. my blessings in my life. But why uh, do you think? Um, <laughs> why do you think? Or how do you think our friendship is working, despite that I moved to Los Angeles and we don't even talk every day? Oh, I adore you. I love you. I respect mm. you so much. You're a heart friend. You know, you just know it when you've met heart friends. You know, you just love each other and respect each other. And it... We're far, but when we're together, it doesn't feel like time has passed. Right. It's like, I miss you, but it's so good to catch up. And we just pick up where we left off, and we laugh, and we have fun, and we're authentic and genuine. I think all those things make a great friendship. Yeah. Like, honesty, authenticity, supporting each other, respecting each other. Yeah. Common values. We both care so much about people. We both work too much. <laughs> yeah, Doc, we do. But it's a mission. It feels like a mission. So, Absolutely. Yeah. What Julie said, how can you 
find balance sometimes when you love what you do. And you know me, dog. That's been my lifetime problem. I, I just love what I do, too. But, yeah, it's hard at the same time. But we really need to take care of ourselves. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I know I need balance because when I'm on vacation, if it goes more than two weeks, I get bored. I bet if I were in Europe, though, I wouldn't get bored. You know, or in the Philippines, I probably wouldn't get bored. I know you. You're so cute. But yeah, tough times, especially right now. We can't even travel. I know you like traveling too. But um, God, I can't even imagine. This year. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Until the, I, I think, personal opinion, guys, I think until they found a vaccine or something, it's, it's not going to go back to what where it used to be. Or will it ever go back to where it used to be? So I think this COVID is just part of our flu season now. I unfortunately don't think a vaccine will help because it, it mutates. Like we haven't had much luck with the flu vaccine. That's right. So I'm not too optimistic about um, a COVID vaccine. I think, I think the better way is to um, take care of our immune system. And if we're at high risk to seclude ourselves, you know, and to protect ourselves and to protect each other. Yeah, you know, like I'm making sure I'm very cognizant who I'm who I contact so I don't put anyone at risk. So and I have slowed down in terms of contact just to take care of others so I don't carry it to someone who's at high risk. Right, right. Yeah, do you you made a really good point though during this pandemic time, I guess that's one of the lessons we really need to learn like hygiene, wash your hands. <laughs> Jamie both Jamie and I said, you know, wash wash your hands, wash your shit and then wash your hands again. <laughs> I'm always washing my hands. Yeah. Same, Doc, same. Let's just hygiene and yeah, like you said, protect ourselves so we can protect everyone in this planet. I guess Mother Earth needed to breathe too. So she just sent everybody home like, you guys need to chill. You know, there's so <laughs> many fires going on. There's earthquakes going on. There's just so many things going on around the world that we haven't heard in the media, whatever. So... Yeah, like I said, guys, and I'm very, this is one thing, actually, the one thing that I'm very grateful is it really pushed me to do this podcast. And like I said, I keep, I keep saying I'm not doing this for, to make me feel famous or whatsoever. I'm doing, actually, I'm doing this for, for myself, therapy for myself. And I get to talk to you guys. Yeah, it's awesome. I think that's one of the blessings of all this. I think we're all being pushed outside of our comfort zones to grow and try things that we wouldn't have done otherwise. Oh, yeah. And so I think there's a lot of valuable things that we're going to carry from this. And I think people are going to value each other more. I think we were also busy. Maybe we took human contact for granted. I was going through a period where I was self-secluding. I was just getting a lot of work done, doing a lot of growth, doing a lot of stuff. And I was ready to bust out and be social. And then we had to distance <laughs> And so did Jamie. So we were just bad timing. Yeah, yeah. But I notice I deal with insurance companies with um, the acupuncture, and they've been nicer. <laughs> so <laughs> that's been worth it in and of itself. They're so nice. <laughs> that's funny. It's been nice to even talk to insurance people. <laughs> so I think we're just all appreciating each other more. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in every case, but I know in my case, I'm, I thought I appreciated human contact, but I just really appreciate and value it even more. Same, though. And same here. I, I mentioned into the last podcast with Jamie, like every single little thing right now, I appreciate it. I keep a grateful and thankful heart, even though, you know, with this pandemic times, life can be hard, but there's so much things you can be thankful for. And there's people who prosper in adversity. So how can we prosper? Because we can. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. God. Just being creative. Yeah. Thinking out of the box. Uh, truly believe there's, there's always a goodness in everybody. Yes. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, we just took Mother Earth. We're saying higher spirits, God heavens, whatever you guys um, believe spiritually. Something is telling us that you know, we took for granted so many things. This is like the perfect time. Like I said, I keep saying, sit down, think about your life. I guess have fun, whatever it takes, keeping you sane. Take care of your mental, physical, spiritual health is very important. But yeah, um, we'll go back to your friendship, Doc. Sorry, I'm like bouncing, bouncing around. But you know how I appreciate you too. You know that. You know I love you so much, Doc. One mm -hmm. of my um, soul sisters out there. Feel like. Yeah. Feel like yeah. Feel like we've known each other too for years, and I know you're one of the people. Literally, if I go back to San Diego crying, you're probably one of the people I can run to. Not that's oh, definitely. <laughs> Please do. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> okay, just last few things, though, because uh, I I don't want you to get stressed out or tired before your next client. Do you have um? If you were given a chance, do you have a message to your younger self? I do. I want to, I would love to tell my younger self that you are loved, you are loving, and you fit in. Like, I didn't know it, but so many people don't feel like they fit in because we're all so unique, I think. You know, we, we don't all fit into a mold. Thank you. We're all so unique. Yeah, yeah, that's that's powerful, dog. Yeah, and it's gonna work out, and you get to go to California. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna take yourself to California. <laughs> All of us, you know, that's awesome. And you're gonna meet your soul family. <laughs> so many things that we we wish we've known when we were younger, but you know, life is just full of lessons. That's how we learn. It is how we learn. I'd like to also tell myself to trust myself, trust your feelings, trust your gut, trust who you are. I always questioned who I was because I didn't really fit in to the societal mold. I thought something's wrong with me. Nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> We're all different. You're perfect the way you are. Yeah. And listen to yourself because that's the right path for you. Yeah. We all need a different path. Yeah. Oh my God. Dog, that's 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 beautiful i love that trusting yourself it, it won't make sense w with other people out there but oh god once you learn trusting yourself or believing in your gut whoo life life changing it is life changing yeah you know who you are yeah. be who you are because it's it's not worth to not be who you are because that sucks your soul that sucks your energy because then you're not authentic to yourself and you're living mediocre and yep. most people aren't willing to live mediocre they aren't willing you know to not love who they want to love yeah and live what they want to live and do what they want to do so you deserve to do what you want to do where you live where you want to live and love who you want to love too thank you yeah no yeah no one can define you but you <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Don't listen to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> right. Exactly. How I, that's how I grew up. Like, you know, I've experienced those bullying and I needed to be like straight, whatever. But God, Lee, I was way, like you said, a wasted of energy. I sh I, I, one of the things I re regret, but it's, you, you know, power, one of the most powerful lessons I've learned is just don't waste your energy to people who bring you down ever. <laughs> ever it was a part of the process it's a part of the process you know we're in um a heteronormative society and and so it does mess with people's minds if they don't fit into that and they're both just who we are you know yeah oh my god though how how what this is such a Three dogs, so I, I'll, I will let you go soon. But you know how I appreciate you. I genuinely appreciate you. No, no, not even words can explain that. Um, what you gonna call it? Oh, yeah. No, please promote. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on my Facebook too. Please promote your business, businesses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to support people. 
in their physical and their financial well-being. And so I've aligned myself with people who really care about others and care about what's doing right for others. And it's win, win, win. And that's been in my head for years. I've been looking for my tribe, people who truly care about others, who are helping people's health and well-being. And then we're also respected. Like, um, unfortunately, in the OT world, we've become a little bit like factory workers, and they really want us to make a lot of money, see a lot of people, and we're all in there because we have hearts that want to heal. So that inspired me to go an entrepreneurial route because I hit the glass ceiling in 2009 and I noticed that we we're being pushed to work harder for less and we got a 10% pay cut this during this COVID. Not respected, no bonuses, but the CEOs got bonuses. So I thought, you know, how am I going to work around this? Okay, I'll give myself my own raise. I go into business for myself, treat people better, what they need, it'll be win-win. So weekly we have um, Zoom meetings for holistic hydration education. It's really amazing, really eye-opening facts about the water that we drink. There's yep. water to tell people to drink that I don't anymore because I know better. And knowledge is power. So there's, there's never pressure. It's just really good information that you can use right away and it, everything's up to you you know what path you want to take but it's nice to have education so then you can make choices and then there's um also monthly uh, zoom meetings for wine women and wealth in money 101 and it's teaching middle america how to protect their money so when the stock market goes up, you gain money, but when it goes down, you don't lose money. Mm -hmm. And I studied it for over a year. And then I took all my money out of stocks, Roth IRAs, and I moved it into this living benefits where I could um, use the money tax-free for retirement or long-term care if I needed or hiring someone to help me if I needed, or if I did have something critical happen, it would help me to live while I was recuperating. It's nice because it's flexible and it's tax-free. And I didn't know much about money. I knew how to save it and not spend it. And I, um, but I didn't know much about how to invest it or how to take care of it. Um, so I could maximize it and actually retire. For a long time, I thought I couldn't retire. But because of this, I could, I could retire and I'm not scared. Like if anything could happen, I know I have it taken care of um, and it's tax free. So there's also programs to help people who are huge in debt with school. We know a professional who can talk to the he can work it out so people might owe so much money, hundreds and thousands of dollars and wean it down to a very small amount. I wish I had known about it before I paid everything off. <laughs> but there's help out there for people. There's, there's really legitimate help that's win-win. So, um, and then also I love to help people build up their health with acupuncture, herbs, cupping, it doesn't hurt. I also do distance, distance healing prayers and Reiki and I'm just passionate about improving people's quality of life because my life has been touched by heart-centered people and I've been fortunate to come across people who really helped me and I've always had a passion to want to really help people like yourself. So I just got to live it and I get to make a living from it and you know, it's it's better because it's win-win. Yeah, I respect my patients; they respect me. Everything's fair. Yeah, you're very respectable, doc. You you don't gain that easily. You earn uh, that. I respect you. you so much, doc. I, God, and I adore you so much, too. You know that. Uh, but 
Yeah. I do you too. You've yeah. made it your own, just like me. It's not easy. Oh, it's not God. easy to here all alone and just do it. Mm -mm. It takes a yeah just very blessed though I'm, I'm i'm always one of the things every time i write in my journal i'm always grateful especially I came, i'm not from america you know i came from the philippines my english is broken everything about me is broken <laughs> but i've i've i'm very blessed that i've met you guys so that's the one thing that i will never forget in my life but yeah it's not that easy for others out there you know um, yeah. All right, Doc. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. But before I let you go, I, I don't know who's my next. I have so many people in my list next week. But w is there any random question you want to ask someone? What makes you the happiest? What is your flow? What is the thing that you do where time stands still? Or time just... It just goes. It feels like it's a minute, but it's been hours. What is that thing that feeds your soul? What is your flow? What is your flow, though? I want to, I want to, I want I have several. One of them's dancing. I can dance for hours and it feels like time still. Another one, yeah. I'm sure, like, I have to keep watching the clock because one session, it just goes by like that. Because I have so oh. many to help people with. And then another thing, and it just feels so calm. It, there's just this calm energy, this healing vibe. And it's just beautiful. And I love it. And another one's art. I've stopped doing art, but I really love throwing clay. I love drawing and painting. I never um, knew that about you. That's crazy. I, I did it because of the cold winters so where you stay inside. <laughs> that's awesome mm -hmm. i need to get back to that but those are all my flow or just being out in nature time just flies being with good friends laughing yeah little things like that that we took for granted big time but oh there is something i wanted to tell my eight-year-old self when i was eight years old i had such a crush on my teacher and my old brother said i'm gonna marry <laughs> miss cook when i grow up I said, no, I'm going to marry Miss Cook when I grow up. So he, cute. Because well, yeah, girls can't marry girls. <laughs> and I was heartbroken. I'm like, that is not fair. <laughs> that boys get all the good. <laughs> and as right. girls have to be bored. So I would like to tell my eight-year-old self, women can marry women. It's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't cry, don't cry, honey. It's okay. <laughs> you can find yeah. your miss. <laughs> Marry her. God, that's like a broad. I, I will do like a Zoom sometime too, so more people can join, you know, and all that. But it's something about, it's very broad topic about, you know, the teenagers right now, younger generations right now, don't have it easy. All right, Doc. Thank you so much. I appreciate you big time i adore you god okay. you're, you're one of my life's blessings i can't even i can't even explain that to you in the words but i'll talk to you later. i'll see you soon. Hello. you're blessing the hospital no. you're doing so thank you though yeah we try someone has to do it right <laughs> well you do it, you daddy thanks though all right. Well, I'll message you later. You take care. And I'll see you soon. Talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>